A while ago, I made a video on my Toshiba Satellite A665-S6086. It was just a quick video basically replacing the smashed display that that laptop had with a new one because, well, I wanted a screen that wasn't smashed. It's been a while since that video came out and, well, not much has changed with this laptop otherwise. If you aren't familiar with this laptop, and frankly, I don't blame you, it's a pretty basic laptop. It has a Core i3 M370 processor with 6GB of RAM, upgraded from 4, a 500GB hard drive, a DVD burner, and Windows 7. And that's about it, really. Some versions of this laptop had an NVIDIA chip in it, but this one's not that special. I've kept this computer around as a router. What I mean by that is it has an Ethernet port on it, so I can use the network bridge feature of Windows 7 to get some kind of internet over ethernet since my router doesn't have another ethernet port to run all the way across my room. The network bridge feature isn't a part of Windows 10 or newer, so this laptop has just kind of been the one to do that on, I guess. And the CPU in it's not that great, so, you know, if it's just sitting on all the time, it's not gonna draw that much power. I do use this computer sometimes, however, and one of the things I did with it for some reason, as I decided to install Windows 8.1 on it. Maybe I was really bored one day, I honestly can't tell you why I did, but this install of Windows really hasn't worked out very much. This computer has some problems with it, shall we say. So I thought it would be a good opportunity, I guess, to make a video out of the recovery on this thing, since I need to do it anyway. So that's what this video is. Really quickly, before we continue, this machine has an HDMI port, which means for the first time on this channel, I can actually use my capture card to directly record footage from the computer instead of having to point a camera at a frickin' screen, which is good considering this computer has a very glossy display. There's not really a whole lot going on on this install, it's mostly just was upgraded from its original install of Windows 7, and that's kind of about it. I used it for a little while, but now that Windows 8's out of support, it's not like there's really a whole lot of reason to run this version of Windows over Windows 7, frankly. The other problem I'm having with this is Windows Update is seemingly bricked on this computer, so I can't update it or do anything, which is kind of annoying when everything complains about Windows being out of date. So either way, I think it's a good idea to just get rid of this install and put something else on here. To get into the recovery on this computer, it's kind of strange. You have to press the zero key when the system starts up. It kind of feels like you're activating a video game cheat code or something. The recovery partition on this computer is kept on a hidden partition on the hard drive, so you can't see it from Windows. The only way I was able to tell it was even there was because the partition was smaller than it was supposed to be. It boots up a standard Windows 7 recovery environment, and the Toshiba recovery wizard is just part of that. Once it boots up, it's extremely cleared immediately by the giant warning text that this program is going to delete and reset our hard drive to what it was supposed to be when it was new. Interestingly, this program allows you to recover it to the factory defaults, or to just erase the hard drive entirely, which is actually kind of a good feature if you're getting rid of your computer. It allows us to recover it to an out-of-box state, or do it to a custom partition size. So, neat. There's not much else to add to this really, so let's let it run. I'm sure it won't take very long at all.
As expected, the recovery finished with no issues at all. It was completely perfect. Oh. Right, that's, um, that's not very good. I did some Googling, but the FC120570 error just simply comes out as a memory or hard drive error. What's not good is there are multiple error codes that mean the exact same thing, so I didn't exactly have an idea of what the problem was. Well, maybe, maybe it'll still get somewhere? I mean, it, it did most of the recovery, it has to be at least got something on there, and it looked fine, but eventually the inevitable happened. I have no idea what any of that means, but I do definitely know what this means. It means we're screwed. As expected, literally nothing happens from here. The computer is just effectively bricked, so I figured I guess it couldn't hurt to try and change memory since that's what some people reported as working. This computer has 6 gigabytes in it, I upgraded it from 4 and I decided to just throw in one of the modules, in this case the 4 gig module, since that was the one I hoped wasn't bad. But there was still no change, it gave me the same error. And just for good measure, I tried the 2 gigabyte module on its own, and that also threw the same error, so I'll just save us both the time of having to watch that. Either way, I left the 2 gigabyte module in here since that's what came in this computer and I knew it worked. Well, next thing is the hard drive. I had another hard drive laying around that I was trying to replace from this computer, but I figured, well, it can't hurt. But indeed, still no change. The recovery still just didn't work. And it took even longer to get to this step on this one. So at this point, I kind of didn't know what to do. This error code just didn't get me anywhere obvious. A lot of these Toshiba error codes don't get you anywhere obvious. Basically, it was kind of just trial and error. I did remember, however, that when I got this computer, I made the recovery disks that came with it. This computer originally had a bad hard drive in it, and it took a lot of work to pull the recovery partition off of it, but I was able to make the disks using that partition after a lot of tinkering with it. So. Since I didn't really have anything to lose anyway, this computer was not bootable at all, I grabbed those disks and I put them in this computer and tried formatting it that way. I've never used these disks before because I've just always used the partition on the hard drive, but it boots up the same way as the recovery media, there's no real difference. The only real difference is that now it has to copy everything to the hard drive before it can do the recovery, so it takes four times as long but I didn't really know what else to try. This actually seemed to be working pretty well. It copied the first disc just fine. It all went wrong, however, when I was attempting to change it to the second disc when I accidentally pulled the power plug out of the laptop while trying to change it. In my defense, the power plug is stupidly close to the DVD drive on this laptop. This turned out to be a big problem because once I did that, I couldn't get it to boot the disk again. Like, it was stuck in a boot loop, basically. It just wouldn't go anywhere. It would try to boot the disk, but it would just restart. So now I was doubly screwed. Now I couldn't even get into the recovery environment at all. Some more time went by, and I did some tinkering with this computer. What ended up bringing it back to life was, well, playing RAM Bingo again. This computer seems very picky with RAM, it's kind of strange. I had to reseat the original 2GB stick of RAM that this computer had in order for it to boot again, which seems kind of strange to me that it would need the original RAM working properly for it to work, but maybe for some reason it checks that. Or my RAM's just bad, which is also possible. But eventually, we were finally back to square one. I let it install all of the disks, and it took a very long time. But eventually, after a lot of time, it, in fact, got somewhere. So that was a cool four hours wasted of trying to figure out the other hard drive. The only explanation I have for why this method seems to work more than the hard drive is that, like I said, those partitions were originally pulled from a bad hard drive, and that hard drive was used more after I made the disks, so it's possible maybe those just bad spots on the recovery partition, and when it tried to use it, it was just corrupted. 
I cloned this hard drive from the old 500 gigabyte hard drive that was bad, so it would have had the same problems. But finally, after many hours, we were back to where we were before. Now it's time to let it sit and cook for another few hours since we're not done yet. Like, this isn't the end. It's just there was a massive headache to get to this next part. <laughs> Finally, after seven long hours of trying to get this to work, it's finally done. Holy crap. <laughs> this was way longer than it needed to be. The setup for this is, as you would expect, it's pretty standard Windows 7 stuff, asking you to accept the license terms and setting up Windows Update, so I won't really spend too much time on that. But I will point out that the logon screen has a different wallpaper from normal, so that's interesting. Interestingly, the display drivers on this don't appear to be that great since it's trying to letterbox 1366 by 768 so I guess I'm gonna have to leave it in 1080p. As far as programs this PC comes with, there's Adobe Reader 9. You can't have an OEM PC without that, it seems. It also comes preloaded with Office Starter 2010 with the ability to unlock a better version with a product key. It comes with Word Starter and Excel Starter. It also apparently shows you ads for some reason. It also has the Best Buy PC app, your one-stop shop for great deals on software. Who knows how long it's been since this last worked. Corel Label at Once, which appears to be a disk labeling software that I have no idea how to use. Google Chrome, and an ancient version of Google Chrome at that, holy crap. This was absolutely a throwback, and I'll probably leave it on here to be honest. This is kinda cool, honestly. It's Google Chrome version 5 from 2010. I'm definitely leaving this on here. That's kinda neat, actually. It also comes with all of the recovery programs that you would expect, along with Norton Internet Security 2011 that you would also expect on an OEM PC. So that's coming off here as soon as this video is done. And now it's time for the Toshiba programs. We have Toshiba Book Place, which I have no idea what this is. It kind of seems like a precursor to the Kindle app before that was big. And apparently it reads to you. It also has Toshiba Bulletin Board, which I'm not going to lie, I have absolutely no idea what I'm looking at right now. It comes with a Toshiba Eco Utility, which is I guess meant to be a power saver type thing. It's got a button for this on the touch buttons on top, but this PC has built in hard drive protection. We have a program for that on here. I'm amazed this hard drive even supports that. I did try it and it does indeed work, so interesting. It also has a disk status thing in here, which I don't see the need for. 
We have hardware set up, which I've actually seen this on older Toshibas. It's actually kind of a neat program. It basically allows you to change BIOS settings from within Windows, so it's kind of a more user-friendly way of interacting with BIOS, if you will. It has a built-in diagnostic tool, enough said, as well as the PC Health Monitor program, which has this interesting graphic. It's actually kind of a neat program. Again, it's kind of easier to understand for an end user. And it does tell you useful information. It also has the service station, which seems like a software updater thing that probably stopped working 10 years ago. The sleep utility, which allows you to change the sleep and charge settings, basically allowing power to the computer when it's off. And the zooming utility, which I have no idea what this does. It also comes with a DVD player, can't forget that. Admittingly, this looks like it's 10 years old. And finally, Windows Live Essentials 2009, because this computer was too old to ship with 2011. Interestingly, the recovery process appears to have also restored the original recovery partition. I guess that explains why it took so long for this to be done. It was copying all the files to the hard drive, then restoring them from there. Otherwise, that's about it for this very ancient load of software. As you might be able to tell, this isn't even Windows 7 Service Pack 1, it's Windows 7 RTM. So this must have been a very early Windows 7 PC since it doesn't even have Service Pack 1 on it, and I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's kind of about it for this computer though. Just this video took so long as is, I think it's probably best to leave it here. It'll definitely take some time to update this machine, that's for sure, but while I've been editing this video, it's been working completely fine, so I think it'll be fine from here.